So let's take a quick tour of my Boron Tipper collection. I don't actually use all of these all the time, but they've got some different stuff. Starting with this uh, first couple, these are pretty standard tippers that you'll see from a, a bunch of different manufacturers. Uh, you can find them online. One's a little bit lighter, and then the dark one's a bit heavier. These next two are custom-made ones, which you'll see are kind of longer than standard. I use them on the heavier skin drums I have, and they sound pretty great, although they're a little on the heavy side, so they can be kind of tiring to use, but they do work really well. Next, we have the, the boomstick, which is a, a, it's actually a cut-down piece of broomstick, rounded off and grooved, which gives you a nice round sound, but it's actually fairly light, and I like this a lot. I use this a lot on my Brendan White drum. These next three are all uh, made out of skewers or cane, a multi-rod style tipper. First one is kind of an inexpensive one you can get online for down, about 10 bucks. Uh, and this one here is one I made myself out of uh, kebab skewers and I sanded and rounded down the ends of. And then this one is from McNeela Instruments, uh, which I use this one probably the most. It's good medium size and works well on all the drums. Then we've got these two are made out of cut down bits of fiddle bow. Um, there's a couple manufacturers that take and will uh, use broken fiddle bows to make uh, drumsticks out of boron tippers. This one is the Ronin a Snooty Whipper Tipper, which is a long and thin one. Um, it gives a, a very sharp kind of poppy sound to it. Um, I don't actually like it on everything, but it's a kind of a neat effect sometimes. But Ronin Snooty from Kila uses something like this all the time. This one I use a lot, especially on my Finnegan Hill drum. This is the the uh, frog end of the fiddle bow. It's got the screw on here, and then it's actually got a bit of a... can't really see it too well, but there's a bit of a lead weight in the other end, so it balances really nicely. And it's a really good all-around stick. This one is another one from McNeela. Nice light skinny stick. I don't use it much, but it's kind of a nice uh, inexpensive and quick uh, way to get that... Uh, pencil tipper sound where you want the, the thinner end. This is the Matt Bell signature stick from Rebellion Drums. This is a really probably the most complicated build. It's got the drumstick end, it's got a flared end down here so you can play uh, rolls with it, although you can also use it single-ended. This section is triangular and it's got a bit of a heat shrink for a rubber grip. So it's actually works really well for a lot of different stuff and that also sounds pretty great on the Finnegan Hill drum. A little bit too light for the Brendan White or Vignoles drums, but great all around. And these two final ones are actually special effects here. This isn't a tipper. This is meant to be played on the back of the drum head as a slide. And this is a brush. It is actually the remaining one I have of a set of Remo Jazz Rakes. I don't know where the other one went years and years ago, but you can use it either on the drum head to get a brush sound or you can put it against the back of the head, kind of like this, and you'll get like a snare drum sound out of it. Out of the ones, I probably use these four the most, uh, depending on the sound I'm looking for. On the, on the uh, more traditional, heavier skin drums, I'll use the broomstick one a lot. It's light and quick and sounds great. I'll use the brush, the multi-rod brush beater on a bunch of things, and then these two on the thinner-headed modern style drum.